From your favorite dietitian, everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. Tip with Tony. 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 Hello, and welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. This next interview is with Emily Grant. She's a personal growth coach and a really good friend of mine. I'm really excited for you to learn how to take whatever struggles you've been dealing with and turning them into passion and purpose. And she really is a huge inspiration to me. So I'm really excited for you to listen. I don't want to take up too much of your time. It's kind of a a lengthy interview. So enjoy. Hi, Emily. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Tony? I'm doing good. We just got off that live, which was so great. I'm so, so happy we got to talk about it. You were talking about some really awesome things, so I'm excited now that you get to share it with the podcast fam. Thank you. Share it with the Instagram fam. Now time for podcasting. (laughs) Yes, podcast fam. Yes. So please introduce yourself um, and just say who you are and a little bit about what you do. Great. So I am Emily Grant, and I am a personal growth coach and a professional dancer. I run two businesses, and I help, I'm committed to helping people live their best life. Yeah, and so me and Emily have connected, I mean, a few years ago. I don't, when I was in nightlife, like not in nightlife, I was not a dancer in nightlife. I just went out a lot, (laughs) and I met some people, and then... Um, I ended up taking one of your dance classes. Yeah, so I taught you... bar classes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I came to my bar classes. I loved having you in there. Yeah, that was the best. It was so much fun. And then, yeah, and so, anyways, we stay connected through social, and I've seen your personal journey just grow. I've seen you go from having your one business, which I already looked up to you for, um, for just being a business owner, you know, under the age of 30. And I inspired to do that. And so you're like a big part of like why I'm, I was like, I need to have my own business before I'm 30. Like if she could do it, I could do it. <laughs> Although there are different fields. Like I was like, no, like does, I don't have to be a certain age to have my own business. Like, so it was like, I just appreciate seeing other people in that space. And so thank you for that. And then now you have your other business, which yeah. is called Timeless Moves, right? Correct. Yep. So the first one is Karma and Soul Entertainment. That's my full service entertainment company where I staff professional dancers, specialty acts for nightlife events, corporate events, and Timeless Moves is my new baby with Mm -hmm. my partner, Jessica Viola. And we provide motivational dance workouts in corporate environments. And we integrate leadership development, uh, a lot of cognitive exercises into our workouts. That sounds so fun and definitely something that the corporate world needs. Yes, definitely. They're like high stress. That's why they're probably not moving enough, not getting, they're probably sitting a lot at their desk, right? Our goal is to get everyone up and moving throughout the day to help increase the productivity, alleviate the stress that they feel from just being stationary for so Mm -hmm. long. Wow. So what made you go that, like go that route? What made you choose to do that? So my passions are helping people, studying behavioral patterns, thought patterns, and really helping people understand themselves and raise their own self-awareness. And, uh, and then dance is my second passion. So it was time for me to combine my two passions, which I was always wondering how I was going to combine the dance with my passion for helping people. Mm-hmm. And by integrating those two passions together, it fueled me to start this second business, Timeless Moves, because it allows me to go into these corporate environments, help people develop confidence, leadership, connection, team building, workout, dancing, and really get them to um, feel better ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. And so you have a little bit of a, a story though. Like it seems like everything's going well for you. Everything's really good, but it wasn't always like that for you. So if you don't mind, can you just share a little bit more about your journey um, and kind of the, the struggles that you went through and how it led you to where you are today? 
absolutely. And, you know, all the struggles that I endured and the obstacles, all of that, I've been able to turn all that pain into um, my opportunities for growth mm-hmm. which is in the place that I'm at now. So it's really crucial in understanding how I got to this place today. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I was young, I was born with a submucous cleft palate. My speech was unintelligible. Uh, I went to intense speech therapy after multiple corrective surgeries to repair my speech. Um, it was tough because people never understood me growing up. It wasn't until middle school that I had my first um, surgery. And when you're in middle school, yeah, 11, I was, I wasn't, and it was eighth grade. It was actually like I was 13. So mm-hmm. imagine not being understood for 13 years of your life, you know, yeah. it's tough. Um, people constantly saying, what are you saying? What are you saying? You know, but dance was always an outlet at a very young age. I enrolled in dance classes. I was three and I would mimic my teacher's movement and dance was an outlet. It was my passion. Even though I really couldn't understand what they were saying, I knew I could copy the steps. <laughs> um, so that, that was a big hurdle and obstacle between the surgeries, the speech therapy. You know, I was teased. I was teased. People would often ask me, like, what are you saying? Why do you talk like that? You know, I definitely had people like, I remember like mimicking how I spoke. And, but I always recognized that it was something that was out of my control, right? Like I was born with this. There's nothing I can do at this point in time to change it. All I can do is get the surgeries and see what happens. And I never allowed it to stop me from speaking. I actually, on my report cards, teachers were like, she talks too much. My mom was so happy because I couldn't talk for so many years. When I, I didn't say like my first word, I was three and I still couldn't speak because I was also deaf. So Anyway, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't hear. I had to get multiple uh, corrective surgeries on my hearing too. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and then when I was nine, my father took his life. So aside from dealing with all the speech impediments and everything, I was also watching my uh, father suffer from severe depression, bipolar. Uh, and then he uh, took his life when I was nine. Uh, And then, you know, it was, I went back to school fairly quickly, but it was tough because I never knew at that time, being that age, how that loss was going to affect my future relationships and how it was going to manifest later in life. And, you know, when you're, you lose someone when you're young, whether you're in therapy or talking to people, it's great because, you know, present, you get to be present and really let out the emotion and cry it out. However, it still gets embedded within you. you Mm -hmm. That's what I like to talk and focus on uh, with other people as well. Like, you know, you may face a loss and grieve and think that you're fully healed, but it comes back later a lot. Later. You know? um, Especially at, at nine years old, like how much of that can you truly understand and process? Totally, totally. And I knew it wasn't my, you know, I was repeatedly told it's not your fault, like, you know, all this stuff. But no matter how many times you hear that, or even if you say it to yourself, you know, believing something and uh, understanding it is different than just hearing it and saying it. It goes for yeah. affirmations too, right? Yeah. Say I'm beautiful a hundred times, but unless you actually believe that you're beautiful. And so it's the same thing. People can mm-hmm. say, oh, it's not your fault that your dad left. But if I'm not really understanding and believing it, and then mm-hmm. I grew up carrying that belief, which I did for a long time, like it was my fault, my fault. Yeah. That played out later, you know? So um, I worked through that um, over the years and it was working through it kind of came at the same time as a lot of toxic relationships. Like I entered physically, emotionally, like abusive relationships and um, not all of them, but, uh, and then when I had good relationships, I didn't know how to navigate those waters. Um, So through those experience of the toxic relationships and working in nightlife, which posed its whole, uh, you know, nightlife posed, its own issues (laughs) uh, for me. Um, But it was through those experiences that I actually also got to wake up and work through that loss, Mm -hmm. you know, of my father. Um, But it was a bumpy, bumpy ride from 20 uh, to 30. (laughs) It was very bumpy. Um, Like I said, I was in the toxic relationships and also just with the entertainment company working in nightlife. You know, it's very easy to get wrapped up with people who maybe their mission doesn't align with yours, but you don't even know it at the time. Cause I always knew my mission was to help people. I always knew that, you know, I wanted people to um, be happy and live their best life, but yet I wasn't doing that for myself, you know? And so I was with, you know, even though that was my mission, I knew that I wanted to do that. I wasn't acting in the ways or surrounding myself around the people that were doing that, 
you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, And uh, three years ago, I was a big turning point for me because I woke up um, in a hospital um, in a coma. Well, I eventually woke up, but I was in the hospital in a coma because the night before I was, I had overworked myself and I was out and I accepted what I thought was an energy drink from someone. And it was a date rink drug in between the high levels of alcohol. My BAC was like just super, super high in between that and the date rink drug that I had t- took, um, it put me in multiple seizures. And when I woke up, I didn't know where I was. Luckily I had been with people that night who, you know, cared for me and they rushed me to the hospital, but, um, I, I was near death and, um, uh, I wasn't waking up in the hospital. And when I did eventually wake up, it was like a miracle. Mm. It was at that time where I knew that I had to shift. You know, I had been overworking myself in nightlife. I was, I remember that weekend I had worked six gigs, like back to back to back. So I was on no sleep. I wasn't properly nourished. I like didn't eat enough. And it wasn't because I didn't want to eat. It's just that I was so busy and focused on getting from this job to this job. And I was managing too. So Mm -hmm. I had costuming and managing all the talent. And, you know, I, um, my expectations are very high for myself. And I knew I wanted to execute all these events professionally, which I did, but look where that got me. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, at, what price, mm-hmm. at what price? Um, so mm-hmm. when I woke up and not knowing where I was, it was in that moment that I was like, okay, it's time to make some changes. Um, I wasn't very happy in my relationship at that time. And he wasn't abusive or toxic or anything like that. But I just knew that like, it wasn't fulfilling me we, mutually. We finally split and it was not too long after that experience. And, you know, I felt so free after that, right. Cause I was holding on to something that wasn't right for me. So that experience that I had, although it was traumatizing, it allowed me to really recognize that it was time to transform like mm-hmm. things that weren't serving me anymore. And it's really difficult to do that. And, you know, it took that experience for me on my journey to really serve my evolution, to get to the next chapter and the next phase of my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, so like I heard this story before, but I still can cry. Like I'm not, <laughs> I that. I, I, it's just, it's just so like, I just, I just feel like, you know, that saying God only gives you what you can handle. And like, you've just been through so much crap, but you really are so strong. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. It's just, you said something that really, you know, when I, everyone always says like, Emily, you're so strong. You're so strong. And like, yes, I'm strong having gone through that and endured it. But people often then associate that, that like, okay, well, she was weak when she was in it. And that's something that I like, just want to get out there. Like people Mm. often assume that like when you're going through these struggles or these obstacles and you're having these breakdowns, crying or like waking up in the hospital, like I wasn't weak then. And not that you're saying that, but like, like I want people to understand I was just as strong then as I am now, right? Mm-hmm. It's just that mm-hmm. I didn't have the tools then or the support mm. or know how to reach out for it. Totally. And now I do, right? So right. it's like, um, thank you for like the compliment, but yeah. I just want everyone to know who's watching this, like whatever obstacle or hardship or struggle you're going through, even if you feel weak and you're crying, like you're still strong, even if you mm. feel weak, right? It's just like, that's the state of being, be strong even when you're crying that that in those tears there's so much strength right 100 percent wow (laughs) no 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 no. like thank you for that and I think that's so true it's like also too it's just like it's just part of the journey like if you're struggling that much it's not over yet like this is just like it's just unraveling itself and I I love that like you one of the things that you said is that at, at some point you realize okay like this is not who I'm supposed to be. This is me right now, but this is not who I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you took the steps to kind of get away. So let's get more kind of tactical, like what specific steps you kind of mentioned, like you started saying no to things, like you wrote, you ended a relationship that didn't serve you. Like that's really hard to do. I think we get comfortable. And especially because this relationship, it sounds like wasn't toxic. So it wasn't bad. So it's like, what am I ending it for? Like, oh, right. <laughs> right? <laughs> it comes down to like, okay, well, what's your definition of toxic? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. How, how, yeah, it wasn't toxic relative to any of my other relationships. And no, it wasn't toxic in the sense that I felt that I was being emotionally or physically abused. But 
that's still not justification to stay in a relationship just because you're not being emotionally or physically abused. Right. Like we have to raise our standards and I'm just going to be a little bit, I'm going to let personal stuff in because yeah. whatever at this point, yeah, sure. free, free, free range. <laughs> Um, but I've like dated the absolute worst of the worst and then been in really terrible relationships and have tolerated like low here. And when I started getting myself out of that, I go to therapy and my therapist was, I would like get all excited about like this new guy that I'd be dating and like see how great he is. And she's like, it's, she's like, okay, we have to take a step back because like the fact that he picked you up with his car yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you didn't have to meet him there is not something like no, oh I my know. god like doesn't make him great that should be your general standard like yeah. there's no why is that <laughs> why is that above your expectation no, I mean it's so funny that you're saying this but that one point I was meeting this guy another guy who wasn't really like that toxic was just like for fun but like yeah. I remember he like paid for my ice cream this is after I got out of like the most damaging narcissistic sociopathic um I got out of that a relationship with someone who uh had that and he paid for my ice cream and I was like oh and I'm yeah like, he paid for my ice cream like what like okay like Emily how I my worth was like zero, zero. <laughs> yeah we just yeah we just jinxed each other I just said zero <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no it takes time though to yeah. really raise those standards and recognize your worth and develop the confidence within yourself to know what it is that you deserve mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. another um part of it you know and like what I'm committed to helping people with is develop that confidence that self-awareness and their self-worth to mm-hmm. know what they deserve you know how does someone even start with that like what do you even do yeah. You know, it's a process and, and it's a journey and I'm all about affirmations. I put affirmations everywhere, but believing these affirmations um, is a whole nother part of the process. And what I think is so important is like saying that you're beautiful in the mirror a hundred times or saying that you're strong a hundred times. If you're not actually practicing and being the person that you say that you want to be, it's very difficult to achieve the results that you want out of mm-hmm, life. Right? Mm-hmm. So uh, journaling is a huge, huge, huge um, tool that people can use to really help to understand themselves and where they're at. And, you know, it, it sounds, everyone says, oh, get a journal, write your thoughts down. But I underestimated the power of that for a long time. And it was in my journaling that I was actually able to see my progress too. And like, because I look back at my journals now and I, I wasn't consistent at all. And now I'm working on being more consistent. I'm still not perfect, right? But like years, I look back at what I wrote in like 2013 and I'm like, holy shit. Like I predicted where I'm at now. Mm back then and you can actually track your progress and it feels good to know like hey I was here and now I'm here right Mm -hmm. so when you journal it really gives you a great um like uh baseline to know like hey like this is where I started this was here and now look where I've grown to right Mm -hmm. so journaling helps give you clarity it helps you to understand where it is that you want to go um, it's all part of the healing process and developing that confidence and the affirmations, like I said, is key, but being that and practicing the affirmation is the more challenging part, right? Right, right, right. I can say I'm strong a hundred times, really, you know, but if I don't believe that I'm strong, that affirmation means nothing. Mm-hmm. You know? So what would someone do to act strong? Like if they're saying, if they're trying to be strong or... But I guess it's similar to like if you're in a relationship that's not serving you to to end it. <laughs> like I don't know, like where how? So the beingness and being in the state of strength and power and courageousness really has, comes from unraveling your trauma and your past, right? Mm. Like you have to go backwards in order to move forward. Yeah. And- lot of what the transformation work that I do consists of Uh, and I've been working on this for my entire life which is Mm -hmm. why you know the healing process for me has taken so long and you know um you go back and you unravel and see where it started right like what led to that confidence drop or and then of course you may have started with low confidence then when you entered these toxic relationships or you entered all these different situations that really didn't serve you, that just like exacerbated the fact that you don't have low confidence or low worth, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so it's just like triggers, right? So you start 
already with this and then you enter all these toxic relationships and then your self-worth just like diminishes even more. Mm. So it's really important to look back at where it started and then undo all of the pain and the suffering. Mm -hmm. That is huge. People always say like, don't look back. Like this is something that I'm so passionate about speaking out about because don't look back. No, it's so important to look back. You just don't attach to looking back. Right, right, right. right? You know, so you dissecting your past, looking back, talking about it, sharing about it. There's such a stigma that people like about talking about your past and your struggles and your obstacles that you're going to be weak. No, all of that stuff, if you're sharing in the best ways, are going to help you. It's very therapeutic and cathartic and journaling about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Once you do that and you really get to work through all of that past stuff, then you can start to work from the present and develop the confidence to move forward in your life and to grow and to transform, to become Mm -hmm. the best version of yourself and the version that you want to be. Yeah. So basically face your fears, face whatever's going on, stop trying to run from it, it, pay attention to it. And when, when I, and when you say like face it and when I tell people to face it, it's not just like, okay, like for me, for example, my father died, he took his life. That sucks. <laughs> right. Like mm-hmm. it's so much deeper than that. Well, how mm-hmm. did that affect me? What did that make me feel about myself? Right. Mm-hmm. And in therapy, I was in therapy, you know, I was able to learn like, okay, I felt responsible for that death for a long time. Like it was my fault. I was unlovable. Right. Mm-hmm. So that core belief of being unlovable, that became my story. But mm-hmm. it was on a subconscious level. I didn't think I was unlovable. If you had asked me like, Emily, do you love yourself? I'd be like, hell yeah. Look mm-hmm. at me in this awesome costume right now mm-hmm. you know, for the camera, right? But like, that's not real love for yourself, number mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. It was a lot deeper than that. And two, I got to work through that limiting belief of being unlovable over the course of time. But it takes practice, right? So to come to the place where I'm at now, where knowing what I deserve, which is a lot more than ice cream being paid for, for me. (laughs) And, you know, people want to rush the process. And I would, I think my growth would have been a lot quicker. Like I don't have regrets and I'm so grateful for all the experience I had, but had I had the support, right? Because I felt very alone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someone said to me, well, that was just your perception. No, like, Okay, fine. Yes, that was my perception, but I was alone, right? I didn't know how to reach for support. I didn't have very close relationships with my, like, family. Like, I mean, I love them, a lot of them, but, like, on that intimate level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't enough. I can really, a lot, because it sounds, and I think that's why certain coaches go into coaching. Like we have our personal experience, like anybody who's listened, they they know, like I went through a lot of stuff. I come from a loving family, but I still didn't feel like there was room for me to share. So so that's, I had to deal with a lot of that stuff on my own. So like I've gotten help from teachers. I've gotten help from coaches. I had reached out to guidance counselors. Like I got some help, but it wasn't enough from what I needed. And I think that's the same thing for you. It's like, you probably had great friends you could talk to you along the way. Like you've had experiences where it, it, it helped a little bit, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't to the level that which you needed, which explains why you have created this new business and this coaching like, uh, like model that you do where you're working with people one-on-one so intensely because you realize that if they have this, they can save themselves so much time and frustration um, and they can grow faster. Exactly. And you know, and it's not about pushing them to grow faster than they're ready for, but it will happen naturally if they're yeah. someone who understands them. And that's what it came down to, right? Like the people were there, I had friends, but their level of, they can only understand from the capacity that they have, right? right. And not everyone has the capacity to understand on the levels that you want them to understand. Totally. Totally. Um, now, one thing you mentioned in the live, I thought was really cool if you could share it here. Um, and I could be saying it wrong, but like the be, do, get or something. Yeah, or explain that. Like what people, the concept people think they're supposed to work and how would they actually are supposed to work? Totally, totally, totally. Um, and I learned about that in my own transformation workshops. Um, mm-hmm. And now I integrate it into all the coaching that I offer. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to ask yourself, what do I get to be in order to then take committed action and doing what I need to do to get what I want to have, right? Like that's the 
the ideal way, right? Because a lot of people get stuck on the doing this, right? Like I'm going to hustle, like, let's just say perfect example. They want like a lot of money, right? I'm going to hustle, grind, kill myself, which I was there Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, in order to get this big amount of money. But they forgot about the beingness and being in the state of mind that they really needed to be in, in order to do everything. And if they work in this way, it's not going to be effective for them. They're going to struggle getting what they want to have. And then when they have it, it's going to be really difficult to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um, And another way of looking at it would be like, okay, well, right now I don't have a lot of money. What do I need? What type of person do I need to be? And then what kind of action do I get to take in that state of being to then get that money? Mm -hmm. Um, So like I can be open to all the opportunities that come my way. I can be powerful. I can be strong. I can be courageous and be appreciative and be grateful for what I do currently have in this moment. Gratitude is huge, you know? Mm -hmm. And then from that place, that foundation, take committed action. It's not that you can just be there and like law of attraction. Now I'm going to get everything I want because I'm being awesome, you know? (laughs) (laughs) But you still get to take committed action, but you take it from that place. Mm -hmm. First, the place of just taking the committed action with no strong foundation and no roots to hold everything together. Mm. Then when you get to your goal, then you get where you want to be and you're going, it's going to be that much sweeter and the gratitude and the appreciation is going to be there for it. Mm. Uh, And that's something I practice daily. There are days where I wake up and I'm like, I'm not being the person that I know that I want to be right now. So like, what's the point of all this committed action that I'm taking right now? If I'm not being present, I'm not being what I need to be in mm-hmm. this moment mm-hmm. but I do know that even when I was struggling through the obstacles and this is what I also coach you know I was still grateful I was still grateful to be alive and be grateful to breathe and don't get me wrong that's not to be confused with not having moments where I wanted to die because I had those moments mm-hmm. but there was still this sense of I was destined for something greater I knew that you know like I'm sleeping in my car right now but I'm, it's not going to stay this way mm-hmm. You know, so, and that's really important too, to know that when you are stuck, it's not going to stay that way. And then when you can look at, if you have a journal, you look back and you say, oh, you know what? I was stuck back in whatever on this day here, but then I wasn't stuck here, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you can always make those comparisons and really see the growth on on paper. Yeah. I think the the big word that comes to mind is hope. It's like you, if you, you have to have hope, you have to believe hope and belief. I would say those are like the two big things. It's like that, you know, it is going to get better. And if you're, if you do take action, but like, I guess the, the right way to say it is purposeful action, not just taking action, just to take action, but purposeful action, knowing that this is going to serve a purpose for you. Maybe not right now, but it doesn't, you won't get the results right now, but in the future, you're doing it for something bigger. Exactly. Like, yeah, you have to you look at what it is that you want out of life, right? It's like, whether it's finding your passion, finding your purpose, discovering all of that. And then it's like, okay, I know that that's my goal. What do I get to be and then do what I in, and get to do what I need to do in order to reach that goal. And it mm-hmm. is a journey and it is a process. And you may hit like a lot of rock bottoms along the way, right? Mm-hmm. And you know that, hey, let me hold on to this hope and then ride back up the wave, you know, ride back up. I may drop back down, but I know that I'm going to get back up. And a lot of people who uh, take their life, face depression, anxiety, I've been there. So I get it. You know, you lose that. You, you feel hopeless. You you're in desperation mode. You lose the hope mm-hmm. that it's going to get better. Mm-hmm. Having the support, reaching out, you know, being around people, even who understand you. Maybe they're not a you know, coach. Maybe it's just a friend who just gets you to, the, you know, like no other. Having that is so important, you know, mm-hmm. um, and knowing that you're not alone because I felt alone for many, many years, you know, um, but then I was fortunate enough to reach out and for support and, you know, and when I say fortunate enough, I really mean I was fortunate enough to come to a place where I recognized and became self-aware that that's what I needed. Right, right. Um, yeah so so what was one of your like what was one of the first things that you did when you realized that um 
what were you mentioned like earlier, like there were you listen you went to like workshops and read personal development books. Do you have any specifics that of uh, like maybe books or workshops that someone could attend or listen to? Yeah, absolutely. So Gabrielle Bernstein was a huge inspiration for me. I mean, she still is. Um, I went before she got to where she is now. I was in a workshop with her. This is actually in 2013. A friend had recommended me um, to her and there was only like maybe 50 of us in a room with her. So it was very intimate now. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, it was really intimate and it was amazing. And like, it was a four week workshop in Manhattan. And I also had read her books and thought her insight just helped me so much. Um, a lot of self-development work like podcasts and then Eckhart told me his books and another thing though you know that I realized and this was as of lately it's like you can read all these books but again the practice mm. implementation of it yeah a daily um practice into your routine is a whole nother story and it mm. helps to like uh, read the books again journal about the books or maybe what helped me actually in this will help other people is that you know like when I would read something then I would say okay like how did that translate into my life Mm -hmm. right how can I take that principle and then work it into my daily practice right Um, Right. so Eckhart Tolle is a wonderful author and um yeah he's amazing I love him (laughs) yeah I just can't listen to him on audio yeah it makes me fall asleep yeah just read it (laughs) I love audiobooks but with him oh my god Uh, his voice I (laughs) To sleep. <laughs> it's, oh my god my godfather loves him so whenever i visit him in florida he'll like re-listen to that audio over and over again i love my godfather i look up to him so much he's such a wise man yeah. um but i just like and he knows i'm very like self-aware and i love personal development and so like he thinks he's it's like i'm loving it and i'm just like oh i call him no no's godfather in greek i'm like no no <laughs> Like, I get it. I understand the lesson. Can we not listen to him? I'll read his book later. <laughs> Everything in moderation, right? So <laughs> much of anything can drive you down. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no, no. But yeah. seriously, though, his message is great. Yeah. I would say Eric Tolle. To Eric, what, Eric, I can never I, say his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, Eric Tolle, yeah. I would say he's more, like, advanced in the sense of, like, I would start with probably, like, Gabrielle Bernstein and, yeah, like, for sure, for work sure. your way up to something like that, because the concepts are a little bit, I feel like you need, a, like, a mental foundation and self-awareness foundation before you could even, because for me, even, I felt like it was challenging me in ways to think of things and that I don't know if I was quite ready for, and I think that's important, too. I don't think we're always ready for certain messages, so you might have picked up a book last year and it wasn't hitting you, but maybe you didn't need it then. Maybe try that book again this year. Gabrielle Bernstein, um, I, I listened to her two of her books, I think. What's what is the one? Um, so wait, she has a podcast, um, actually. Well, it's like oh. that I listen to also. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up here because I actually just recommended this to a friend. What was the name of her book though? Oh my god, I read it like in two thousand. Yeah, I read I read it. Maybe I read it almost two year a year and probably a year and a half ago, two years ago. Oh my god, I can't think of the name. Of it. But that's so cool that you got to yeah. learn from her before she blew up. That's yeah. like so cool. Because to be honest, you the lessons are the same. Like these people with like thousands of followers that are credible, like it's the same story they've been saying for years. They just now have a bigger following. So it's harder to like get to learn it from yeah, them in an intimate way. Yeah. You know, she offers like, uh, you know, coaching and stuff to now online, which she yeah. didn't like back then. But, um, Oh, here it is though. But this is what I was talking about. So like on the podcast, uh, wait, I don't know if people can see this. If it's, Oh, all right. Well, on the podcast, she has uh, a welcome to guided meditations, feelings, meditations, forgiving meditation, Creative Abundance Lecture. I love that. I mm. recommend that to people. Um, it's only like four little episodes, but they're great. Um, awesome. Yeah, and meditation is also another tool that I recommend to people. Yeah, um, I am a huge advocate for meditation as well. Um, I usually tell people to do like Headspace. What what app do you like tell people to do an app? I do follow on YouTube. Like what do you usually tell people? Yeah, I usually go on YouTube. So I don't have a specific like playlist that I created, although that's something that I want to do. Um, I go on YouTube and then I find one that resonates with me. And I usually will search like keywords that are, that I feel that I need at that time. So for okay. example, like if I, 
am looking to meditate on getting clarity, I'll type in like getting clarity meditation. Gotcha. If I'm looking for like um, manifestation, I'll type in like manifestation. Yeah. That makes sense. I should do that more because when I do it, I just do either like five minutes or 10 minutes. It's like whatever I got time for, yeah. <laughs> and then it pops up. <laughs> you know, and I definitely am guilty of this, like not meditating enough. Meditation mm-hmm. um, is best when it's a daily practice. So it's mm-hmm. like every morning, every mm-hmm. night, one or the other or both, you know, yeah. um, and creating the time for that is so important. Totally, totally. I am committed to finding the title of, oh yes yes the, uni- <laughs> the universe has your back the universe has your back yes that's the book um it's good yeah that's yes good. And she has another book out to may cause miracles oh i don't know that one i'm gonna add it to my list because i'm almost done with my one audiobook yes yes and then there's judgment <laughs> detox as well um, Ooh, judgment detox that sounds good yes pretty sure that was the name of her I'm definitely putting those on my, my audio list. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So Emily, so you do coaching one-on-one, right? Yes. Like with people. So is there, I would love, I think, I think it's helpful for people to hear like specifically from like another client that you have, maybe not obviously with not giving out their names. Yeah. Like, is there a certain client that comes to mind to you that like, where where he or she was when you first started working together a little bit about their story and their journey and then where they are today and like how coaching has helped them I would love to hear more about that absolutely so there's one uh girl that I work with um and she was in a very miserable toxic relationship um and again, I don't label the relationships for people, right? Like I mm-hmm. will tell them what it sounds like to me. Mm-hmm. I'm not a therapist. I'm not diagnosing. But however, I can express my opinion of what it sounds like, mm-hmm. right? My experience of it. Um, and I know that it was toxic from what she expressed to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so by raising her levels of confidence and increasing her own self-awareness into what was making her stay into the relationship, she was slowly able to get out of her relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It happened overnight. And I'm not going to push for anyone, you know, uh, process to happen overnight. And that's an issue that I have with a lot of coaches where they like just sell you this false belief and idea that like, okay, end your relationship in two weeks, in 14 days, end this and do this and do this. And then it's like, okay, that's not how life works. That's not really. No. Um, yeah. Um, so I worked through uh, that relationship with her and she's no longer in the relationship. She uh, left and I'm so proud of her for leaving, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was through really us working together to develop her self-confidence and mm-hmm. her, her worth. Um, and also understand like the hardships and the traumas that she went through that perhaps led her to enter into a relationship in the first place. Absolutely. And that goes back to like undoing that past stuff, right? And like, yeah. Um, so now she's no longer in that relationship. She's not seeing anybody else, uh, but she feels free. Mm-hmm. She feels so grateful to be out of it, right? Like, and that's not always the case. You know, I've spoken with people who like, initially they go they go back to that relationship and then it's like a cycle you know that happens a lot um Mm -hmm. with her from my understanding she has not gone back so Mm -hmm. um it's free and you know we're just still working on like now what does she get to be Mm -hmm. and what does she have to do in order to attract now the relationships that she does deserve absolutely absolutely yeah because definitely one thing I've learned like Um, like through my personal experience, I can really only speak to that, but it's like, we, sometimes we choose relationships out of something that feels comfortable in the sense that it feels relatable because of maybe the way that we grew up. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but that doesn't make it like that. It's comfortable that it's good for us. It just means that like, if you're used to being like, I know for me, because my sister struggled growing up, I was always the caretaker. And so I always felt like it was my responsibility to make the person in the relationship feel good, but they didn't have, I never got that back for my sister my whole life. So like the expectation for them to take care of me was not even on in it. Right. And so until I brought my, my awareness and realized like, Oh, okay, that's why I'm so attracted to this man because he's so needy. He needs me. 
Exactly. He needs me, but like, I don't need him, but he needs me. And that goes to play into like how I led my life, like live most of my life. And that's why it feels comfortable. And that's why I don't want to leave. But is this really what I need? No. <laughs> like, that is the same exact thing. Like, yeah, for sure. Like, right. So I lost my father for a long time. I thought it was my job to fix everyone. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I held on to that belief, but it was on such a subconscious level. Right? Yeah. You didn't realize a lot of work to bring that to the surface and like so I was attracting a lot of men who needed help like Mm -hmm. and I thought it was my job like I'm gonna save them right so in like one way it's almost like me saving them is reflective of me saving my father well like that's not realistic right exactly Um, but I had to undo those faulty belief systems Mm -hmm. and peel away all those layers really life is just about peeling away the layers and a lot of people it's scary to transform that way and peel those layers because those layers make us feel like you said comfortable and safe Mm -hmm. you don't know what's on the other side right like it's like if you're standing behind this door and you confine yourself to this space behind this door and you never open and unlock that door you don't know what's on the other side Mm -hmm. so it's scary to step onto the other side and you know in transformation work also we learn like you don't know what you don't know Mm -hmm. totally totally Wow. This has been so helpful, so informative. I feel like you're you're just so wise and I would just like love to be able to talk to you forever. I know. Um well anyways, unfortunately we do not have all the time in the world. So just please let people know um, how they can find you and get in touch with you. Yeah, so I'm working on my own personal website right now because I have so many businesses. It's like <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> uh, so the best way to contact me right now would be through Instagram or email. Um, okay. So my Instagram handle is Emily Grant says. So my name Emily Grant says because I say a lot <laughs> and I be a lot and I do a lot <laughs> uh, and help others do the same. Uh, and then my email. Uh, my personal Gmail would be the best way right now. Um, it's just Emily Grant, my name, 8787 at gmail.com. Perfect. Yeah, and so my website is finished. <laughs> yeah, and eventually you're going to do have a podcast. Yeah, so I'm going to be starting a podcast, yes, this summer. Yeah, so I excited. And I can have you on my podcast. Yay! <laughs> I care. Amazing nutrition tips how to fill their bodies. So they don't end up like I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for that. Thank you so much. Is there any last minute things you want to say that, to anyone who's listening? I just want everyone listening to know that they're not alone. Feeling mm-hmm. alone, even when we're surrounded by hundreds of people is common, you know, because you feel misunderstood, right? Mm-hmm. So they are not alone. Mm-hmm. And I want them to know that they can reach out for support. There are people there who understand them. It's just a matter of finding those people. Totally. Totally. Now, thank you so much, Emily. I know that if anybody has any questions, they can reach out to you. I'll put your contact information in the show notes. Um, Yeah. And if you guys have any follow-up questions, you guys can ask me or reach out to Emily and be happy to address them. Yes. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Thank you. Wow. Was that not so powerful? I hope you found this super helpful, super uplifting. If you did resonate with this, please screenshot it, uh, share it on your story, tag me, tag Emily. I'll put her contact information in the show notes. Send us a message. Let us know that this was something that really helped you throughout your journey. If you need extra assistance, I know Emily and myself are more than happy to help you. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for listening. As always, this is the Tips with Tony podcast. Tony Marinucci, registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time.